welcome to the Remedy Fibers podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back. Today, I wanted to talk about my year in review, some Ravelry features to keep you on track to meeting your knitting goals, and what's in the future, what I want to knit and crochet coming up soon. So I really enjoy using Ravelry. There's a lot of features there that help me keep on track for what I've been working on, as well as project notes, project goals and one of the features that Ravelry has is creating a challenge. So in the start of January 2022, I created a challenge to knit seven things. And if you've been watching the podcast, I've definitely surpassed that and I have knit 17 things since the start of this year. So I'll take you through what I've knit, what I've crocheted, as well as what I want to continue doing for the end of the next, I believe we have five months left in 2022 that is crazy this year just has been flying by so i've made some notes for myself this year i have knit three pairs of socks and it was actually my first time ever knitting socks i've tried knitting socks in the past and it was a complete fail and what really worked for me was using nine inch circular needles it does take some time to get used to because they are very small they're very thin i use us one size so that even took a lot of time to get used to because my hands would cramp but i did not enjoy dpns us nine circulars worked perfectly and i knit a pair for myself a pair for my mom and when i was taking pottery class one for my teacher so definitely see more socks in the future but i need to be extremely cold to work on socks right now it's too hot to even think about wearing a pair of socks i wear sandals all the time if i can this year i also crocheted three blankets or throws one went to my co-worker's dog one went to benny and one went to my co-worker i actually had it on my chair for a while if you remember it's the purple crocheted squares but i decided to replace my chair with my cardigan so i have gifted that away just so I'm not accumulating too many things but the other day we were on zoom and I saw her using it for the back of her chair as well as another throw that I gave her and I was so proud of myself and so happy to see that she appreciates and loves crocheted items I knew she was gift worthy when I saw that she ordered like a 200 or 300 dollar crocheted sweater online I think through Etsy and I'm like you are definitely knit worthy and if I was to make things definitely gifting to her she is highly deserving of anything crochet or knitted this year i also crocheted my very first pillowcase i did not follow a pattern but i just wanted to use a lot of my scrap yarn that was sitting around and it's not one of my favorite projects i think the color combinations are just a bit too much for me i'm it's not too pleasing to the eye but i have it here and i can also insert a picture of all the things that i'm talking about everything can be found on my project page i do keep that updated on ravelry and i'll also include a link to my ravelry page in case you want to check that out or add me as a friend i do like to add people as friends on ravelry because i like to check out what they're making what they're working on and just getting some inspiration so now i'll talk about some finished objects this week i was able to finish the my boy lollipop by getting pearly with it nancy ritchie you can follow her on instagram and she also has her pattern page on ravelry but i have a heavily modified my boy lollipop so this one is not true to pattern i've knit this four times already this is my fourth time making the pattern and i wanted to just explore try something new i know last week i was hesitant about whether i wanted to cinch the neckline or if i wanted to add a crocheted strap so i'll show you how it looks right now okay so this is the finished object this is the my boy lollipop and i just love the fit i wore this on monday i think i also wore this on sunday the yarn is by terrapin this is chesapeake dk 100 organic cotton and this is in the one of a kind color Colorway, but she does have her pre-order sale open right now up until the 31st but I love how it looks I love the fit I also include pictures of me standing so you can see the bottom half of it the only thing that I would do next time is I think I would want it a bit longer I was running out of yarn so I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna have enough yarn and it's not super cropped but it's more on the crop side I, I would like a little bit more length and then I would like longer sleeves if I was to knit this again in similar yarn 
My next finished objects are my frogs. They're so cute. They make me so happy. This is a pattern by Claire Garland and I was inspired by Leanne from the Nitty Stew. She made frogs. Then so happens that my sister who just turned 16 wanted a frog. So these are trial and error frogs. My younger sister who is 11 also wants one and surprisingly my 31 year old? I think I just aged him. I think he's gonna be 31. My brother also wants a frog, which I was surprised by that too. So I'm not quite sure who's getting what, but this is my first frog. I ordered 14 millimeter eyes, which I realized that was a mistake. I was supposed to get 12 millimeter eyes. And these are not the cutest eyes. These are more realistic eyes, but me and my sisters agree that they give creepy vibes. They look like they're creeping at you and yeah, I know they look realistic, but we want like kawaii, really cute, like oh, amogurumi type eyes. So I do have those on their way. I think they're coming here on Sunday. So I'm just going to continue to improve the feet and the arms. I have not been following the instructions, so I'm struggling there. I have not perfected the, the feet yet. This one is made directly from pattern, no modifications. And this was my first frog. This is my second frog and so much better, so much cuter. My sister picked out these eyes. She liked these a little bit better. But this one only has two toes. I don't know what happened. I tried to make the legs a little bit shorter because she said, I want the frog to look a little bit more human. And I'm like, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. So this one has three legs. This one has, I mean, three toes. This one has two toes. This one kind of looks like it has a boob. And then I, I don't think I was paying attention. This one has two fingers and this one has three fingers. So this sweater is also called the Froggy, Froggy Sweater by Claire Garland. And let me just take this out so you can see the frog. But she said definitely looks a little bit more human. I also made an error where this arm is supposed to be on this side and this arm is supposed to be on this side. But it doesn't matter. I'm still practicing. So this is the frog. It's so, so, so cute. And then I made the froggy sweater. I believe it's about 50 cents. It, there's a euro conversion but it's about 50 cents you'll have to buy this separate but she wanted a sweater and this is leftover yarn so this is Chelsea Lux and this is the actual yarn that I'm wearing and so it's so cute the pattern was really easy to make the frog takes about a day to make if you are dedicated and have a lot of time I did it on a, I did this one on a Sunday and did this one I think between two days I'll put the arms back later but I also made a little book because I feel like they're reading or studying and it said Mr. Froggy's book so one of these are going to my sister one of these are going to my brother and then I have to make one more for my other sister I want to make another one for me because I made them and then they're all gonna leave me and I also probably gonna make another sweater for my sister's frog but yeah, I'm excited. I am waiting for the eyes to come just so that they have more cuter amagurumi style frogs, not realistic kind of frogs. So as for works in progress, right now I am working on the Anna Test tee. I have cast on, ripped apart, I have cast on again, and I'm still very confused. So maybe you all can help me. I've tried asking my question, but I don't know if the way that I'm typing the question is not coming across clear but if I have let's just say example because this is a paid for pattern let's say I have 300 stitches and I'm being asked to do a lace pattern only on 50 of those stitches what do I do with the other 250 stitches am I just assuming that this is stockinette am I doing something else and this is the part where I'm getting confused and so I said you know what let me just wing it let me do what I can and see if I'm just overthinking it so I'm really stuck on this I haven't really moved past the first section of the pattern and I'll show you where I'm at right now this is where I'm at so I've cast on this is on US 1 so it's very slow for me and there's some cable design elements in there which is easier than i thought but i'm i'm not quite sure how it's going it's, not, it's very 
I, I feel like every time I'm trying a new pattern with new skill sets, I'm so hard on myself. And so I'm like, oh, that's not too bad afterwards. But yeah, I'm having a hard time and I hope that I can complete it and do a good job. But we'll see. I'll keep you updated how it goes. I love this yarn. This is by Great Adirondack Yarn. I picked it up in North Carolina. I just love the color, the vibrancy. And this is 100% organic cotton as well. This year has been a record-breaking year. And I have knit eight garment tops. But I'm so proud of myself. Never did I imagine ever being a garment knitter or knitting my own clothes. And some pieces I actually wear more than others. Some get rare use and I think it's just a matter of trial and error between did I pick the right size even if I did pick the right size does it fit my body the way that I prefer it to some are very form-fitting and sometimes I do like drapey loose things so I think I just need a balance between fitted pieces and exploring pieces that have more positive ease I tried knitting the weekender sweater which I did complete but that one has a lot of positive ease so it kind of strayed me away from positive ease and I said I want everything fitted but now I'm trying to find that balance between not having too much positive ease where it looks like it doesn't fit me but that baggy nice space look that I, that I really want that I'm seeing in a lot of patterns so just kind of exploring what I like on the model from what I'm seeing on Ravelry patterns versus what actually looks good on me and my body type. It's some trial and error but I'm really enjoying this process. It makes me so proud to wear my items out and about to get compliments on them and I'll show you what I finished this week at the end of this. So even though I set my goal for seven projects, I completed 17 and I don't see me slowing down anytime soon. I still have my knitting mojo full into gear and I think what keeps me motivated to keep knitting is watching YouTube podcasters, looking at what's hot right now in the Ravelry section of knitting and crochet patterns, as well as finding one, maybe two designers or fiber makers that really inspire you to keep going, colors that inspire you, and just really making something that you just don't make it and then put it away, but something that you can actually wear. That has really been inspiring me because right now I'm wearing a crocheted piece and right underneath I'm wearing a knitted tank top. So it just gives me that inspiration. Like I can't wait to keep adding more to my wardrobe and just finding ways to style on my day-to-day -day life and that's what is really giving me the energy to keep on knitting even when some patterns give me great difficulty. Projects. So as for projects that I want to continue the year with, if you check out my Ravelry, I have a page for my queue, which is what's going to come to my needles eventually, as well as a favorite section. Things that I'm not really ready to commit to, but most likely they will work their way into the queue. If not, if I'm deciding I'm not really feeling this anymore. I delete it from my favorites. So I have a two-step process before I actually jump into the knitting. What's on my queue, most likely I already have the yarn for. It's just a matter of putting the time in, finishing what I'm working on and going forward with it. And favorites is like, yeah, I would like to knit that. Oh, that's cute. Maybe I'll think about it and eventually get the yarn if that's something that I want to commit to. So what's on my queue right now? Let's see. I'm going to pull it up. I have the ranunculus because I do have the yarn. I have Terrapin, the bouquet colorway, and that is in tinsel. I have the Ripple Halter by Jessie Mae. I do have the yarn for that. I just picked it up at the Wine Country Yarn Hop. The Felix Cardigan, I just picked up the yarn for that at the Wine Country Yarn Hop as well. And I have the Wave of Change jacket, which I talked extensively about last episode. And I don't have the yarn for that, but I want to make it so bad that I just don't want to lose sight of it and get inspired by a different pattern because it was amazing and it was so amazing that i asked bright my husband would you ever want me to knit something for you and he said actually i would like a cardigan i was so shocked by that because he's never asked for anything other than hats which he's lost but i was so impressed that he wanted a cardigan so i said okay let me make mine first and then i will work on yours so i'm really excited to explore something and knitting out of my comfort zone because I've never knit a sweater for anyone else so that'll be really fun and exciting. As for what's in my favorites, I have so much in there and 
When I'm looking at things to finally move from my favorites into my queue, I want to make sure that I'm not splurging too much on yarn. I still want affordable garments and making sure I'm not blowing the bank. Sometimes I will splurge, like for my Felix cardigan, that was a splurge. But for the most part, I want affordable garments that are going to be within my budget. Last but not least, I definitely see more cardigans in my future. I have not made one yet. It is in my queue, but I really want to try a cardigan, something on the thinner side and then something more on the bulkier side and kind of see how it goes because I think it would just be very versatile in my everyday wardrobe. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on how to use Ravelry, how to pick your next knitted garment or crocheted garment, and I hope to see you next week. I hope that you and your family are happy, healthy, and safe, and take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.